and good morning. Uh, well, this is a very brief uh, presentation on Gary, uh, Geoinformatics for Eritrea. It's one of the projects uh, that's been running for over the last two years uh, with, in collaboration with the University of Helsinki. Uh, now I will, I will uh, just limit myself to uh, some basic uh, insights regarding Gary uh, in Eritrea. Uh, now the objectives uh, are one is to train professionals in the field of geoinformatics which is a science that deals with almost every uh, sector of the economy, every discipline, uh, scientific discipline, including agriculture, uh, engineering, industry, transport, mining, and service sector. So we tried to, our plan is just to, to train uh, students in this uh, uh, field. And the second one is to meet the need for highly professional uh, personnel uh, in various uh, fields and uh, that uh, which will be met by, by, uh, by, by training people in the relevant area of uh, uh, Gary. Now the program management uh, includes that this project is managed jointly by, uh, by, by the uh, College of Arts and Social Science, Eritrea and the University of Helsinki, and in a very consultative and transparent manner, and by this I mean that Every administrative and financial procurement and all other issues have been held you know, jointly, agreed jointly, planned jointly, and executed jointly uh, between these two institutions. Now we have the project uh, director at uh, University of Helsinki, uh, uh, Professor Petri, who is in charge of the overall management of the program. Uh, this is Professor Petri. <laughs> Uh, dissemination of uh, research uh, results, uh, findings, you know, organizing workshops, and so on. We have another project coordinator uh, at University of Helsinki, uh, Mr. Pekka Horksinen, who is again in charge of you know, the uh, actual uh, program implementation, uh, the financial approval, uh, procurement, and so on. We have another local coordinator stationed at the University of the College of Arts and Social Science, who is responsible at uh, overseeing the daily, the day-to-day -day activity of the program. We have two laboratory technicians trained by the project and uh, their function is to see that the laboratory uh, is being used uh, properly and they solve any uh, arising problems related to the software and hardware. And finally, we have a departmental graduate program, graduate committee comprising the dean, the associate deans and the senior faculty of the geography department. And the function of this committee is to see, I mean, the overall how the problem is being uh, managed uh, uh, properly. Now, in short, project results. First, we uh, held a very comprehensive TOT, TNA, Training Needs Assessment, executed in the four uh, institutions of higher learning institutions of Eritrea. And that helps us to establish, you know, the baseline of current uh, institutional and uh, personal uh, capacities. Training offered to CAS IT personnel. We trained two IT personnel in um, laboratory, uh, I mean, laboratory works in computer uh, networking and maintenance work. Uh, there was also 12 students from four um, higher learning institutions of Eritrea were selected, and also three from Eritrean Mapping and Information Center. Uh, curriculum was drafted and approved by the national Higher Education and Research Institute. High level geonified courses were completed by students. Eight high level courses were completed successfully by our students. And now they have moved to the actual writing and working on their master's thesis. Thesis proposals have been defended uh, in front of advisors and faculty members of the geography department. And this again went very well. Two phases of final field work were completed successfully, uh, phase one and phase two. Now students having enough data to work on and are uh, on the actual uh, writing up of their thesis. And uh, finally, I mean, the GIS laboratory uh, has been refurbished and modernized in terms of uh, hardware and software. And uh, procurement of lab items from outside Eritrea is done 100% complete. Well, in nutshell, this new academic program uh, consists of uh, highly energetic and highly uh, enthusiastic and dedicated students. And we expect our students to be graduated in July of uh, this year and hope they will solve you know, uh, much of the problems at a very advanced uh, level. 
and uh, we expect also our graduates to show the young generation the, the path to the geoinformatics and they will also act as a bridge uh, builders uh, between various institutions. Uh, this is a picture from the ads, which is a newly uh, established laboratory for our geoinformatics program. And this is one of the professors from the University of Helsinki uh, who came to Eritrea and taught uh, courses to our uh, uh, graduating students, Dr. Mika. And the uh, laboratory work and the actual um, class work situation is also supplemented with extensive field work. This is just an example uh, on the Kohaito Plateau. And here is Mr. Pekka, the instructor, again doing some GPS work on the same field site. The practical session is also held within the campus. This is our campus, a beautiful campus. The students also working on their own. I see the group of students working on a program. Uh, this is when our students were celebrating the laptop day. Well, laptop day, when they were given the new laptop, each of them, they were having a kind of fun and celebrating the same. These are the whole group of uh, students from the Gary project. And this is one of students you know, presenting, defending his thesis, master's thesis uh, proposal and uh, this is the audience, part of the audience from the, the same uh, ceremony. And these are some of the equipment procured through the uh, Rare Sea Trading Corporation, which I said was done uh, very successfully, and consists of uh, this uh, desktop computers, you know, printers, projectors, UPS, and so many others. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Walter, for your <coughs> presentation about some of the practicalities, what uh, you've been achieving in Eritrea. Well, before Pekka is giving his presentation, I'd like to say a few words about uh, how network works. I mean, I've been absent from Eritrea now for maybe two years, but you've been always in my mind through Pekka, through Pekka's work and also to my collaboration in China nowadays. I had a pleasure to work in China with Simon Measha, who's been teaching at Kieri program with, with Becca and you, and now he's doing PhD at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. And I've been meeting him a few times in Beijing uh, and discussing about his PhD thesis topics, which will be about uh, carbon stocks in, in Eritrea. So <clears throat> it only shows this international linkages what we are having nowadays, and even the networks we are building in Eritrea are there in China. Me to work again with Eritreans in China. <laughs> and with these words, I'd like to express my interest that we should keep on the Eritrean cooperation working somehow even to extend our network even, even further. I've been very pleased to work work with you and with all the Eritreans in, in Eritrea and Finland and also in China. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Pekka Hurskainen. I'm the project coordinator for Gieri from Helsinki University side. Uh, in the next few minutes, I would like to share with you how the teaching and research activities of Gieri are linked to the Sustainable Development Goals. We started in 2015 uh, with very basic skills and capacity of GIS in the higher education. Uh, excuse me. Uh, our 12 students come from very diverse backgrounds and various disciplines. Some had never used GIS before, uh, while others had several years of experience already working with GIS and, and teaching as well. But now in 2018, we have 12 students are nearly completed with their studies and now have submitted their first drafts of their master's thesis for their supervisors. 
So what can we do with GIS, with geoinformatics? Basically, uh, GIS helps us to make strategic decisions. For example, where to allocate our resources. With help of GIS, you can find answers to questions like uh, what is where, when, and why. Small countries like Finland and Eritrea just cannot afford not to use GIS in decision making. We need to channel our modest resources in the most cost efficient way. The member countries of the United Nations have agreed on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. Earth observations, geospatial data and derived information play insightful roles in monitoring the progress towards achieving the SDGs. Now, when you combine this information with demographic and uh, statistical data, these data sets enable nations to analyze and model the conditions, create maps, evaluate impacts across sectors and regions, monitor change over time in a consistent and standardized manner and improve accountability. So many, many benefits you can get from using geoinformatics in this uh, field. So here is an example figure uh, created by Group on Earth Observations. This one shows how geospatial information and Earth observation can be potentially used to monitor progress towards the different SDGs. So the SDGs are on the rows, and in the columns you have the different application areas of geoinformatics and remote sensing. And whenever the, there is a blue, dark blue sign, it means that uh, this application can be used for these and these SDGs. And we have 12 master students, and, and uh, I can say that all of their topics are relevant to at least one of these SDGs, some of them even, even several. And, and naturally, the quality education is, is inherent in, in GRE program and in with all programs, but also the different applications areas can be found. For example, clean wa clear water and sanitation, sustainable cities and communities. So I have two case examples. I want to show how actual research work done by Eritreans these young students of ours, how they can bring new information and understanding to how Eritrea can answer the SDG challenges. Lack of safe drinking water is a serious problem in Asmara. Every citizen of Asmara can experience this through prolonged water cutoffs, rationing and water trucking. These problems are mainly attributed to infrastructure problems like scarcity of uh, water supply, poor water lifting equipment and uh, physical leakage of the network. However, these require big investments and are kind of require long-term strategies. We need to solve the acute problem. The existing groundwater wells in Asmara, they should be exploited to the fullest but the quality of water from these wells is unknown. And this is where uh, Cabral Mogos from uh, EIT came to, came to uh, with his uh, research idea. His study provides an uh, overview of the present groundwater quality in the city. His objective was to first determine the spatial distribution and variability of the most important groundwater quality parameters uh, that affect human health. And secondly, to generate a groundwater quality zone map for city of Asmara. So what uh, Cabral did, he, he collected uh, water quality samples from each well and together with their GPS coordinates, and from these samples, uh, they were analyzed in a lab for various physico-chemical parameters. And then using GIS technologies, uh, he, did, uh, he did some kind of a techni using technique called uh, Krieging interpolation to, to um, 
to make a map of the unsampled locations. So we have only point-based information on, uh, on different uh, water quality parameters, but with uh, the interpolation technique, you can uh, make a s smooth surface like this for different chemical parameters like nitrate, uh, total dissolved solids, calcium, and, and so on. So this uh, is, is the first output. And by weighting each water quality parameter, he give a numerical weight, and these weighted maps were summed together using raster overlay analysis to create the final output, the Asmara groundwater quality map. So this uh, kind of a simplified situation of the water quality shows which areas are potable. So these areas in purple are potable and uh, alternate source is the pink. This is the, like the lesser quality water and, and then the water that is completely unusable for drinking is marked with uh, blue. So this kind of map can be used by the water authorities in Osmara to better and safer utilize clean drinking water for its customers. So therefore it's very strongly linked to the sustainable development goal of clean water. Another example about sustainable cities and communities. Abiel Johannes from uh, CAS did a study how, on, on how to understanding how much the built up area of Keren has grown outward, to what extent it has impacted the productive land and the surrounding natural environment within the study area in the last three decades. So those who you don't, don't know Keren, Keren is uh, Eritrea's second largest city, situated in a narrow valley, uh, surrounded by mountain peaks. And this river valley is, is relatively fertile, so very good for agricultural production also. But there is a rapidly growing city here that is taking over the agricultural land. So Abiel used satellite images from 1984 up to 2015. So four different images. And from these images, he derived the change in land cover at the same time period. So first he classified each image separately on their land cover types. And here you can see the land covers. So what we can uh, see is that the built up area has rapidly increased, almost exploded. The built up area has grown nearly five, 500% between 84 and 2015. At the same time, agricultural land has decreased. Agricultural land is this uh, light green here in the maps. But interestingly, the natural vegetation has regenerated. So in 84, there was an area that was, uh, because of the, the, the civil, the, the war situations, there was a lot of uh, destruction of natural vegetation for various reasons, but uh, you can see that the vegetation has slowly recovered, and that's, uh, I think, a positive sign. But of course, these areas are high in the mountains, so they are not suitable for agricultural production. So that's also one reason why they have been left to regenerate. And then Abiel also did a prediction to the future. How will Karen look like 2025? So he did a prediction and it expected that the built up area will continue to grow uh, by 155% according to Abiel's results. Of course, the same trend of land cover change and urban sprawl can be seen from the, these graphs. So in this graphic, you can see the, how uh, bare land has, has diminished as well as agricultural area and grassland and built up have been increasing. And this image shows how the built up area of Keren 
has been continuously growing outwards, specifically to the west, and it's getting more and more scattered. That's the sign of urban, urban sprawling. So the development the build of the built-up area is not controlled. It's completely growing uh, um, without almost any control. So I can conclude that uh, Abiel's study presents an objective understanding of the spatiotemporal dynamics of urban land cover changes. And this kind of information is essential for urban planners and decision makers to put forward the right policies and monitoring mechanisms for sustainable urban growth. So those were just two examples, but I, I wanted to show with this brief time, and uh, you are welcome to ask me more later. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So my presentation is on uh, higher education for food security and environmental sustainability in Eritrea. It's a joint project between V3 of the University of uh, Helsinki. Uh, we have uh, our partners here. Marco Kinaman is uh, the project leader, and uh, Mohamed El Fadli is the project coordinator. And uh, I have uh, my associate dean for uh, research for uh, academic affairs, Professor Oldamlak, at the back. So this. Uh, uh, presentation was prepared jointly between uh, the two institutions and uh, all the partners. And uh, we have all agreed that I presented for the sake of saving time. Okay. So uh, the background for uh, this project is uh, we have... Uh, Poverty and uh, degradation of natural resources is uh, uh, prevailing. Uh, there is deforestation and forest degradation, which is highly vulnerable, and poor agricultural productivity. Both these factors pushed for the formation and uh, implementation of uh, this project. And then there is a lack of skilled persons or manpower and institutional capacity in certain areas of specialization in the country at large and in our institutions of higher education. And the rationale for this project is to build capacity for sustainable land use management for food security and the establishment of the first forestry faculty in the country. Uh, the project information, project title, as I said, it is Higher Education in Food Security and Environmental Sustainability in Eritrea. Uh, the acronym is not uh, very convenient to say it, so you can read it. Partner institutions, the University of uh, Helsinki and Hamel Mal Agricultural College. The project leader is uh, Marco Kenneman, V3, University of uh, Helsinki. Project coordinator is Mohamed El Fadli, V3, University of Helsinki. And the HAC representative is uh, myself, Samara Amlesov, the Dean of the College of Agriculture. The project period extends from uh, the December 2015 to December 2017. Uh, Non-cost extension was applied, but uh, not granted beyond the end of 2017. But the project is still continue with uh, uh, local funds and uh, local resources. The funding in general was 402,576. The project focus areas were project management, human resource development, institutional capacity building, nursery establishment, and small-scale tree planting activities. Uh, a summary of the results of uh, the project implementation. Uh, the first one is uh, the project successfully implemented from uh, management aspect. Human resource development, Teachers exchange, nine teachers or faculty members trained in Finland. University pedagogy was conducted for 35 teaching assistants. The training was conducted in Eritrea. 
course in agroforestry for food security and ecosystem services was another course. 25 faculty members and MSc students were trained in Eritrea. The institutional capacity building curriculum was developed, curriculum completed and uh, in, pro, in approval process, the curriculum is on forestry sciences. Uh, equipment, laboratory, and other materials were purchased and are in place. Some of them have been uh, used to, uh, for, for uh, the successful implementation of our MSc programs and uh, the establishment of the, the, the forestry uh, department. Nursery establishment is and, and functioning of uh, the nursery, small scale tree planting pending, project not extended for its completion. Now, uh, I have divided them into uh, areas of uh, results. The main results in area one is human resource development, which is teachers exchange. Four teachers visit the University of Helsinki for one month each in 2016 and 17. The Dean, the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, Associate Dean for Research and Postgraduate Studies, and Senior Faculty Member from one of the departments involved in the, the project were involved. Uh, all of them visited laboratories, research field stations, met with counterparts, gave and attended seminars, and familiarized HAC with the University of Helsinki, and vice versa. Again, in human resource development, five faculty members trained for three months each from the 1st of March to the 30th of May 2017 in uh, Helsinki, Finland. Uh, they were MSc holders from the College of Agriculture. Since they didn't get uh, that much of an exposure, the whole idea of sending them here was to be uh, exposed to recent developments in uh, research laboratory, field work, and, and uh, other areas, teaching methods, and so on. So they, they achieved that. Uh, they came from the animal science, the land resource and environment, agronomy, horticulture, and plant protection departments. They attended specific training, lectures and labs, access to internet and uh, uh, literature, which improved their knowledge, understanding, and skills in their respective areas of specialization. Uh, when it comes to university pedagogy, Sir Six and Sir Three teaching assistants participated in two sessions in June 2016 and February 2017. Two pedagogy trainers came from Helsinki University. Fortunately, they are here with us, Lisa and uh, Mina from the Faculty of Educational Sciences in Helsinki University. The course of, uh, were composed of two parts. Part one, approaches to teaching and learning, case studies on developing university education and making own course designs and plans. Part two, implementing the course plans by testing new teaching learning options, observing colleagues while teaching, interviewing students, reflections, and reading. As a result of uh, the pedagogy training, participants improved their teaching skills and the learning process of their students, acquired better students' understanding, thinking, rather than memorizing. So this is uh, a picture of uh, uh, the students and uh, the trainers at the end of uh, the training program. Uh, this is a picture while the pedagogy training was in session. It was uh, a lively one and uh, very interactive. Uh, and this is trainees' curiosity on group assignment outputs because they were given assignments and they were curious to see what group presented what. So it was uh, very lively. Uh, again, in human resource development, there was another uh, training session on agroforestry for food security and uh, ecosystem services. 25 staff members and MSc students of 
the academic year 2017-18 participated in the training. Four teachers with different academic and research backgrounds came to, to uh, Eritrea from the uh, University of Helsinki. Uh, I can see Mike Starr here. He was one of uh, the four instructors that uh, conducted the course. The following softwares were provided to assist the trainees in their research and modeling work, crop and livestock modeling, because we had uh, some, some gaps that were identified in the MSc program where uh, qualified instructors were not uh, available on the spot. So I think we took advantage of uh, the, the experience of uh, the instructors from Helsinki University. So it was a concentrated dose within a short time period, but uh, I think it was very productive and uh, assisted our students to fill the gaps. So some of softwares uh, were provided and uh, uh, the training were, was very good. The courses were also supported by research methods, modeling and agroforestry with case studies from different parts of the world. So it assists the, the, the trainees to identify existing land use types and possible inter intervention that improve existing farming systems, introduce and test new crop types on, or, or varieties to increase crop diversification options that include trees, to estimate carbon pools for the identified land use practices. This particular training initiated one MSc student to study on soil carbon content of selected sites uh, in Eritrea. It was uh, a lady student who took that uh, initiative and uh, she is doing well now. And it contributes toward this understanding the course and effects of land degradation process to provide suitable agroforestry intervention and innovations for sustainable development. And this is a group picture of uh, the students in uh, agroforestry. There are four instructors from Helsinki University plus the 25 students that attended the course. Uh, main result two is on institutional capacity building. This entailed into the acquisition of lab, office, and field equipment, and nursery materials, equipment for research and field and office work included light meters, leaf water uh, meter, moisture, soil moisture sensor, profile prop, canopy scanners, leaf area members, meter, GPS, and other useful equipment. Digital calibers, hypsometers, measuring tapes, power chainsaws, pruning shears, hay trimmers, etc. Uh, when it comes to office uh, uh, equipment, laptops, desktop, digital camera, multimedia uh, projector. All these equipments were put in use, especially the, the uh, moisture prop was, was directly used for uh, assisting an MSc student who was conducting his, uh, his research and uh, instead of uh, using the uh, long process of drying in ovens and things of that sort, I think it can instantly give you the results at different depths and uh, that uh, assisted in a successful project. Uh, acquisition of lab, office and field equipment and nursery materials is a continuation. Nursery netting, uh, shading 25 to 75 percent because this is of good assistance, assistance when you use it uh, to cover nurseries, especially with uh, tender and uh, uh, at early age, uh, so it was good. Pipes and fittings for shed house, fencing pipes, polythene bags, and so on. Hundreds of agricultural and natural resource management books, MS and PhD thesis were supplied from the University of Helsinki from, from Vitry, and uh, they were used as good reference materials. Soft copies of text and reference books, periodicals deposited in Hacks Digital Lab for use by staff and students. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the above equipment strengthened HACS capacity to conduct teaching, research, nursery establishment, and other agricultural development activities. And it facilitated the training given by the project as well. 
So this uh, is uh, the moisture prop, which is one of the most important items that uh, we were consigned. And uh, it was directly used for calibrating the moisture content of uh, different levels uh, of the research. The last one, main result was uh, nursery establishment and small scale tree planting activities. A central uh, hack nursery established on an area of 4,200 meters square. Nursery area was demarcated, cleared, fenced, and divided into uh, plots, mother trees of fruit, and forest trees planted according to plan. Two new nursery shed houses of 158 meters square and 195 meters square area were constructed. This will be used for production of seedlings of various plants, i.e. forest trees, horticultural fruit trees, vegetables, flowers, spices, and medicinal plants. About 15,000 seedlings of forest and fruit trees and ornamental plants prepared in old nursery to be transplanted to new field and shed house. Uh, this was uh, constructed from from resources, the materials were from uh, the, the project, but uh, the manpower, the bending of the pipes and uh, the construction of uh, the shed house is from our staff and, and workshop people. So this is uh, under construction, and this is when it was uh, constructed, the one at the left, and the one at the right is when the soil was filled so that, uh, that uh, the small seedlings in the other nursery could be transplanted safely. So this is one of the, of the things that has been done. This is uh, students uh, doing their practicals in the new nursery. This is uh, another shed house that was constructed next to the main building where the labs are located. We have a tissue culture, a biotechnology uh, lab in uh, the building at the back. So once uh, the pro pro materials are propagated, then they have to be transplanted or transferred to uh, a nursery of this nature. So this one is also constructed uh, very close so that uh, the plants or materials are not contaminated if they are transported for, uh, to far off places. Now the challenge is faced. Delay in the disbursement of funds from the University of Helsinki was one of uh, the problems. Delay in the approval and commencement of the project by almost six months. Delay in the procurement and delivery of project equipment from the University of Helsinki. Financial, financial transaction system introduced by uh, the project was not uh, compatible with uh, HACS finance, finance officers and project accountants. So that also took some time to uh, get used to. Lack of efficient internet connectivity with uh, the University of Helsinki partners, problems with the utilization of funds from HAX accounts, but this was resolved after uh, several months, coordination or communication challenges between University of Helsinki and HAC partners, non-cost extension of the project applied but not granted in spite of its late start, unfinished activities and good progress from HAC's side. Uh, now, what the way forward, what, what uh, activities are remaining? Utilize acquired equipment and teaching materials to enhance teaching, research, and development activities. Complete nurse nursery establishment work, which is already uh, on the verge of completion. Complete the construction of nursery and shed houses. Plant and transplant seedlings of relevant trees and fruit species to the new shed houses. Distribute forestry and agroforestry seedlings to farmers. Finalize forestry and wildlife curriculum and open the department in forthcoming academic year. Uh, so I urge uh, the people uh, responsible to reconsider the decision on non-cost extension of the project to make good use of the remaining funds for the completion of the activities. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.